Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to the late, late, late show here at the Highbury Squad. Not the result we had all anticipated or wanted. Nonetheless, we are here to discuss all. Here we go. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. Good evening, everyone. I'm not going to sugarcoat how I feel. I'm not going to act like I'm happy and I'm full of energy and beans. I'm just not. That's not how we roll here on the Highbury Squad. I'm even going to introduce my podcast brother from another mother like this. Super Kev, Super Kevin Campbell. You're, You're the freezing a bit. You're the sh you know what? It's cold here today, and also I got colder after the game, Kev. Yeah, yeah, I I, I understand your 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 cool and cold feeling because they were there for the taking. Come on, so you're freezing, my darling. I'm not. I'm saluting. No, that's how good I am. You're freezing and saluting at the same time. <laughs> One minute you're there talking, next minute your arms up. So, <laughs> am I okay? Squaddies? now? Yep, you're fine now. Okay. Squaddies. Oops. Sorry. You keep flicking in and out. Keep going. Squaddies. Keep going. Keep squaddies. going. Keep going. At ease, squaddies. Let's get into it. I can't be too long tonight. Yeah, we're not. I've, we're going to get. I've had a right. hell of a long day. Kev, you're wearing your dicky bow still. It's all happening. And I'm cheesed. And I'm cheesed <sighs> off just like you are. Uh, I Okay, let's just get stuck into it, shall we? The team sheet came out, and mm -hmm. I asked Arsenal fans to have a little bit of patience, considering El Nenny part partied, partnered party last season at Old Technical div... How about now? Do you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Um, we... I asked Arsenal fans to be patient, Kev, because I said, okay, El Nenny party, partnered party last season at Old Trafford, and we won. Mm -hmm. So let's just let it roll and see what happens, okay? And I'm just starting to think, Kev, and I wanted to start off here with you first before we get stuck into the play ratings and stuff. This is going to be a really quick show, you guys. It's late. It's going to be a half hour. We'll get stuck into stuff more as the days go by. Should we stop asking... Who's going to part, part, partner Thomas Party and just ask who's the best partnership in midfield for the Arsenal, Kev? He was absolutely awful today in that first half, especially. Yeah, and it and it and it can happen at times, Soph. It can happen, but you know what, Sophie? I thought, look, we didn't play particularly well, but you know what? They were there for the taking. So let's so, be honest. They were there for the taking. Okay, so they if were. we want to be honest, Kev. They were. Why is it? I, I just read actually a tweet from Tim Stillman. He said, it's starting to become obvious that if we're up after half an hour, Arteta's asking the players to retreat to hold back. Why is it obvious? How is it obvious? It wasn't obvious against Tottenham and it wasn't obvious against Leicester, but maybe... So how can he, how can he say that? Against teams <laughs> like Manchester United, maybe, I think. Kev, come on. I mean, we should have buried them in that first half. They're so yeah, but, rubbish. Yeah, but no, Sophie, just, Sophie, we didn't. Mind... That's, and that's the bottom line. We, we, we should have, could have, would have. We can't survive on should have, could have, would have. We know we should have, uh, we should have done them. But it's our own mistakes that kill us. Against the better against the better teams or the teams with the threats like they have, you cannot make these elementary mistakes. You, you just what are can't. the elementary mistakes that we made in your opinion, Super Kev? Giving the ball away cheaply for their first pa goal. Th Thomas Partey in the no, first it half. Was, no, no, it was it actually it was Tavares. 
it was a pass between him and was it that was for that the was, Ronaldo goal? Yeah, sorry, that was yeah. that was um yeah. second half. But giving the ball away cheaply, the penalty, you know, you're the wrong side. You can't tackle him there. No, I know, but okay, so we're gonna no, kill no, Udegaard. I, no, 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 them. no, no, Sophie. I ain't killing anybody. I'm just saying you can't tackle from the wrong side. I ain't killing him at all. He put us back into the game. I'm not killing anyone. All I'm saying is, first off, we weren't great. Party weren't great. That's for sure. But Sophie, when we get back into the game at 2-2, we've got to do better. Because they are there for the taking. We got to close it, or we got to be smarter if we just saying we're going to take the draw, Kev. No, either way, so Sophie, Sophie, they were there for the taking, but we made the mistake of tackling from the wrong side. Gave Ronaldo an opportunity, he put it in, and we then couldn't get the the, the equalizer. Kev, you know, and, and we you... had opportunities, so. I was talking to cousin George while we were having a break in between the final whistle and the show. Yeah. And we were both talking about how we showed them too much respect and they didn't deserve the respect. Not this season. Kev. I disagree. So I disagree. You don't think we showed them too much respect by stepping no. off after we went one nil up and then retreating and no, they res Sophie, they respond. They're at home. They respond. If you re if you if you can remember, after we scored, Ronaldo who, uh, who did he beat? He beat someone on the uh, our right there left, cut inside and had a shot. You know they're coming. You know they're coming. They, they can't sit back. They have to come on top of you. So you can't then push forward because you leave people 1v1 at the back. It's not going to happen. So so we have to try and protect what we've got because we know they're going to come. And knowing That's the that problem. We, but knowing we knew that they were going to come and they hadn't beaten us in six games. Sophie, it don't matter. What happened before is tonight. Okay, so let me I mean? ask, can tonight. I ask you this, Kev? Okay, so I'm going to ask you this before we get into the play ratings real quick. Mm -hmm. I I really, you know me. And I hope most of the listeners who are regular on this show know me, right? So I've been very critical of Arteta, but I also give him credit where it's due. And I try to find the positives in the team. So before the game today, I said, you know what? Don't kill the manager for the team he's chosen. He chose El Elneny and El Elneny played in the team that won at Old Trafford last season. Please just let the game play out. Now, when I look at it at the final whistle, I say to Arsenal fans with respect who made these comments and I have to address it because I say, okay, hold on a second. Hindsight 2020 and all that. I know Kev, but is it because we've moved on from that era from the Kalasinac, Mustafi, Ozil, Sogradis, Chambers, Holding era and fans were like, why go back to El Nenny now? Was Party yeah, out of sorts in the first half because he he's was. formed a good partnership with Lukonga and he and Lukonga have built an understanding. Did the <laughs> manager get that wrong in the end, Kev? No, not necessarily in the end. Sophie, again, we, we can't say he got it wrong because we were well in the game. We were at 2-2. Two, two, we could have won the game. So did he get it wrong? Not necessarily he got it wrong. But because Kev, you said you called for the same team. You didn't want any changes. And that's why I'm saying, like, yeah, I, but, I give him the but, benefit of the doubt. Yeah, but Sophie, I also said the manager's going to pick who he thinks is right. I, I'm not going to second guess the manager. He plays who he thinks. At 2-2, two, two, I'm thinking, we go and win this. That's what I was thinking. That is what I was thinking. At 2-2, two, two, we are going to win this. So... You know, did he get, listen, we could, in hindsight, we could say, is this right or is this wrong on any decision where we, we lose? But I don't think that's right. I think at even at 2-2, two, two, we were well in the game. We were well in the game. But we made a mistake. 
Raid, I do not have 10 second memory. I'm asking legitimate questions here. Was Party out of sorts because he has formed a partnership with Lakonga? Is he fully I, I, fit? I, I, I instead of I, well, asking, wait, instead of asking everyone who's going to party, partner party, should you start asking a different question? Who's the best midfield pairing at the Arsenal? Thomas Party has to be a leader at Old Trafford against Manchester United. He cannot regress and play in a shell and give the ball away the way he did in the first half. It's just not good enough. Sophie, I'm tired of he, making excuses. There's no excuses, Sophie. He didn't perform in the first half, but he was a lot better in the second half. Why a not play Maitland Niles with um with Party? I don't know. Why why bring it why go on last year's result? When you are moving on and you're formulating a new team, a new culture, a new DNA, and you bring in El Nenny, El Nenny should have come in with 20 minutes to go. Play Maitland Niles if you want to make a change. I uh, tried Sophie, to support the decision, Kev. Sophie, I don't think El Nenny had a bad game. I thought he was all right. No, he was better than Thomas Pye. No, in, in so the I'm... first half, he was. Not in the second half. For me, not in the second half. Listen, whatever's going on and why why it was chosen, the, that midfield, it's not that midfield that cost us today. No uh, chance. Okay, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna say one thing. Not focal. I'm not in meltdown. Stop it. I'm over it. I I support the manager and the team as much as I can. This game is not comparable to City, Chelsea, and Liverpool. This is a game that we, as Arsenal Football Club, winning it would have sent a message to many. If you look at the table, it would have taken us eight points clear of them, and it also would have steered us clear of our North London rivals. This game was so important, and we blew it. Yeah, we did. I agree with that. We blew it. We did. Absolutely. So, absolutely. And, and it's not just... For, stop telling me it's football. Like, just freaking stop with it. It's football. It is not just football. We lost this game. We allowed a very, very poor Manchester United team to take advantage of us in situations where we have, have shown great strength and will this season, Super Kev. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, Sophie. You're right. We lost the game. That's that's for me that's that's the most damning thing for us. That's the most damning thing for us. I think we showed them too much respect. I believe I I believe and a lot of people text me the same thing. Soph, we're showing them too much respect. They're shit. They've been shit all season. Why are we doing this? Why are we retreating? I mean, it's the same narrative. And also, the other thing too, James Johnston, our tactical squad guy, right? We were going back and forth during the game. And he was, when you asked the question on Kevin Says, are Emil Smith, Rose, Saka and Martinelli ready to carry this team forward? You know what, Kev? Cut the umbilical cord off. Let them go. We're not finishing in the top four this season. I'm telling you that right now. It's not happening. I'm sorry. The difference is, is that there's naivety in our squad and there's naivety in our manager. And Manchester and Tottenham and Manchester United have done what? They've brought in two managers who are very well experienced and have worked at the highest level. In and who? Tottenham and who? Manchester United. But he's not even taken charge. I'm telling so you what's coming. I'm telling you what's coming, right? Okay, okay. Once... Once Antonio Conte beat Brentford tonight, once he gets his foot under the table more, once Ralph Ranić gets his under, foot under the table more, Manchester United have transformed themselves in three games under Michael Carrick. Mikel Arteta lost to Michael Carrick tonight. Right. I just don't think... If, if you think it's rubbish, that's fine. Go ahead. I, I, I respect your opinion. Sophie, but we I try threw, so hard to support away. him and support everything that's happening. And this game tonight is the perfect mm. example of us needing to win, having to win, and we failed 
to win. So can I can I ask you a question then, Sol? Do you yes. think we wanted to win the game? Do you think we played? I to mean, win the I game? believe that we go into every game wanting to win the game. But, but we do didn't. you think no, but we didn't, but that that's why people I are. I think saying they it's wanted football. it more than us tonight. Well, I, I think they did in the end. In the I end, I think they wanted it more. I beg to differ. I think it comes down to that penalty. Do you know, do you, and the do you and know, the one that wasn't given. Well, let, moment, we'll get we'll get into that, moment. right? So let's let's go through the players, but real quick, JJ sent me this. Arsenal's last seven Premier League goals have all been scored by players aged twenty three and under. Emil Smith Rowe, Gabriel. Emil Smith Rowe, Emil Smith Rowe, Bukayo Saka, Gabriel Martinelli, Emil Smith Rowe. More evidence for you. You and Kev were right. I was wrong. I've changed my mind. Perhaps. Why not just let the young team of the future go? He go. He writes, go for the team of the future because it's not the team of today. Kev, take us through the squad. Ramsdale. Well, Ramsdale. His handling was, was, was very good. Um, a lot of shots coming straight at him. He made a really, really good save from Ronaldo when Ronaldo's cut inside party and hit it with his with his left and he, he came and kind of smothered it it went out for i think it went out for a corner or uh whatever um but you know i thought he done pretty well was good with his feet you know i give ramsdale a seven i give him a seven i thought he was decent you know he couldn't do anything with the goals the first the first goal was where fred ended up in the box all got cut back and Fernandez first time did past him. Nothing he could do about that. It happened so quickly. Second one was Ronaldo, where Rashford picked Ronaldo out. He's got no chance with that. And then the third one is a penalty. You know, he's got no chance with any of the goals. So, yeah. you know, for what he done, and he's picking three balls out of his net, so. Which is rough for him. Which is rough for him. It's tough yeah. for him. And uh, and also, you know, defensively, defensively, free lapses. That's what it is. Uh, but this is what happens against teams who have players who can hurt you. Yeah, this I agree with you. I, I agree. Uh, Kevin, I'm not going crazy. It's no, clearly you haven't seen this Greek go crazy. Calm down. Well, Maybe yeah, you're the one you going crazy. You've seen nothing yet, Kev, I tell you. <laughs> Uh, by the way, Kev, there's 500 in live chat and Vinny wanted to get a message to you to say, look, even though we lost, we still love the Arsenal and we got to march on. So hit that like button, right? Hit the like button, please, everyone on the way in. Smash it, Vinny. Hit it, nut it. Listen, I, I think there's a frustration among, among the Gooners. Of course there is, because we know they were there for the taking. So we know that. But we still have to execute and we 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 couldn't execute. And I, I honestly think it came down, so to a penalty incident. They, we had one, they had one. How their one goes to VAR and our one doesn't is beyond me. Okay, that part, I'll, I'll, I, I, I completely agree with you wholeheartedly. And at the top of the show, I said, I don't usually get pissed off about decisions and I never blame decisions on losing because there's so much time in the game sometimes to rectify that. But the fact that they didn't even go to VAR for the Harry Maguire shirt pull on Tommy, my mind's blown. I was, I literally lost my marbles. Mm. I, I, I just, I thought to myself, how is it possible in this day and age of football that we do not look at that on the monitor? But yet, when Udegaard bought out, bought down Fred, right? Was it Fred, right? Yeah, yeah. Straight away, VAR. Goes, goes to VAR and jumped they get in, a penalty. Jumped in. And they Have get a, a look penalty. at it. Have a look. Because remember, but, the ref didn't give it. <laughs> but Kev, that's not, it. that's not why we lost. No, I'm not saying, I'm not saying what, it is why we lost. What I'm saying is it came down to those two key moments. That's my point. It's not the mm. reason we lost because at the end of the day, we weren't good enough. But whoever went in front, Sophie, at 3-2, would have probably ended up winning the game. We go in front 3-2, 
we probably end up winning the game because now we've got something to hold on to. They go three to up. We still had plenty of play in there off, but some poor decisions, etc. You know, we just couldn't get the equaliser. So, <clears throat> okay. So let's go to Tommy. Yeah, Tommy. I thought he had a strong game. So I thought, you know, not many things got past him down that right hand side. I thought, you know, he kind of kept Sancho in a certain place. And I'll give, I'll give Tommy, I'll give Tommy seven. I thought he had a good, good game. So I really did. There ain't many that's going to get a seven. But uh, I thought he he done pretty well. He he is consistent. He puts himself out there, uh, and he's fearless. And I love that about him. And it, you know, not his best game, but I don't think many Arsenal players had their best game. But I agree with you. He he gets a solid seven for me, Kev. Mm -hmm. What did you give Ramsdale? So I'll give Ramsdale six point five. Six point five. Okay. Um, ben White, I thought had a good game as well. So. On the ball, I thought he was good. You know, and, and this is the thing, Sophie. It's not as if Man United really outplayed us that, you know. No, they didn't. We were, we were terrible at the back. It was, that's the frustrating part. You know, Ben White played a ball to Aubameyang over the, over the top, so. And it travelled mm -hmm. like six, 70 yards. He wasn't and offside, Kev. It. No, he was onside. But Aubameyang, I think, Tavares was trying to break into the box and Aubameyang had a shot from a cute angle and um, De Gea saved it. I mean, it was, it was absolutely brilliant. He was playing great football, but... The first again, goal, Sophie, though, Kev. Yeah, but first Sophie. Goal. Yeah, but Sophie, when a midfielder comes into the box and joins, there's nothing you... You, you, have, to, you have to move from your man. You have to adjust. And that's why... Fred cut it back and Fernandez stuck it in. Two midfielders or one attacking midfielder, one central midfielder. So, it, but it, so, and, and whether, however that's set up, it looked like Ben White completely failed to clear the ball and they scored. That's the reality of the situation. Well, Sophie, whether you fail to clear it, the ball still has to come into your box. And they worked. They worked a good move. They're good players. They worked a good move and it ended up in, in the back of our net. Hey, listen, players make mistakes. So I he thought Ben White had a I thought Ben White had a decent game. I give him a, I give him a six, so I'll give I'll him give a, a 5.5 tonight. 5.5. Gabriel, I, I, I thought had a decent game as well. I, again, you know, it's not as if our players were getting caught out of position, etc. But when you concede three goals, so like we did, you know, it's 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 not great. Listen, I'm gonna give Gabriel, I'm gonna give Gabriel 6.5. I thought he was I thought he was all right. Um but we weren't we weren't great, you know. Keeping a clean sheet would have been ideal here, but I'll give Gabriel a six point five. I'll so. give Gabriel six. Okay. And Tavares, who normally we see Coming down that left hand side, really causing problems. Didn't really see that today. No, because so, you know. Okay, so let me ask you this, Kev. He's been that way in every other game. Was he told not to bomb forward today? No. Like strategically no, for the plan. No, no. Well, why? No. How is it? But it seemed like he was a different player tonight, Kev. Because he settled for putting the ball in. I don't know it, why. Because he, he did get up. Or he was told to. No, Sophie. He got up the pitch, but what we didn't see is him driving past. He tried it a couple of times, and Dalot, to be fair to him, done pretty well getting a couple of tackles in. But we uh, didn't I... see that drive. Sophie, why do you reckon he's picked? He's not picked to sit back. He's picked to be an offensive weapon for us. I don't buy this nonsense about he's been told to sit there. No chance. But that's but he has been this entire time with this one of the reasons why so many Arsenal fans have fallen in love with him. And then tonight, by the by against Manchester United, he completely changes his game and he looks like a totally different player. Well, he was settling for trying to put the ball in. And I don't know why he done, but that's not as if he's he's he was crossing it from way deep. He was up the pit, Sophie. But he was just settling it for 
getting the ball in. And let's be honest, a couple of those balls that he put in fell to Saka at the back post, who I think should have done a lot better at the back stick. But I don't know why there's no way, as far as I'm concerned, he was told, don't do what makes what's got you in the team. No chance. But like LT says, no overlap. Can't be a coincidence. Manager's call. Cool. There are tons of people that are saying but the same thing. The manager's, here's the question. Why is it the manager's call for him not to do it? I don't know. Why do is Tim Stillman when saying after him, 30 minutes, you yeah, know, we, we sit back him, if we're 1-0 up? Sophie, he picks him because he brings that to the table. So why would the manager tell him not to do it? It makes I no think, sense. I think we went extra conservative today and we showed them too much respect and it cost us the game. There was so much more. Oh, I'll put this up. Where was that? Where's that comment? Um, let me get this one for you, Kev. Both fullbacks were more cautious. They were. They played totally differently today, Kev. We were so much more caught. We were so, so Sophie, Sophie, Pete, you're not listening to what I'm saying. So I've got, I sometimes always listen some, to you, Super No, Kev. I'm saying sometimes you're not listening to what I'm saying. He what? decided, if you listen, he decided to cross as opposed to commit people and, and break forward like he normally does. That's what he decided. Because at the end of the day, he's on the pitch. He could drive. That's what he normally does. He drives, but he didn't. And it's not as if he wasn't in the position to drive, so. He was. Yeah, so, I mean. Th that's my point. He's on the pitch. He's got the ball. He tried it a couple of times. And as I said, Dallot done well getting a foot in. Why he never tried it more, I don't know. It's not as if. He never tried it, but he settled for the crosses. But also, I, uh, by the way, not focal. Who said Tavares is overrated now? You're the clown. Stop. What are you talking about? No one's saying Tavares is overrated. Tavares has been amazing. He's an incredible player. The conversation is, in my opinion... Why didn't he... Yes, why he was didn't a different he play player like tonight. He normally does. Yeah, why didn't he play? And, Sophie, again, you could say... It's the manager. No. When you're on the pitch, Sophie, and the space is there, he normally drives. We've seen it happen at Anfield. Even when we were poor at Anfield in the second half, he still drove forward. But he settled for crossing the ball tonight. All right. Who's next? Uh, I've not given him a, a, a mark. I give Tavara. I give him a, a 5.5 .5 tonight, Sophie. Yeah, I thought he, he was... He, he, weren't, gets... he weren't as effective as he normally is. And yeah. yeah. Five uh, uh, same for me. Same for me. 600 of you in live chat so late for the late, late, late show after the Manchester United game. Thank you so much for joining us. We usually go at the final whistle. But when you have this dapper fella who's working um, the games and looking so cool in his Dickie Bow Thursday, it's worth the wait. Is it not, people? Oh, yeah. What's next, Kev? So, ESR who I thought done great with the goal. So, bless He done Look, great with the goal. He really did. Kev, can you tell me something as a player? Do you, Have you been taught from day one, never ever stop until you hear a whistle? 100%. Play the whistle. Yeah. And he did. And you know what? It was great. It was quick thinking from ESR. But here's the other thing, Sophie. He, he, his brain was quick. But I thought with ESR weren't as effective as he could have been today. Mm -hmm. For me, I, I thought he had he, he scored a good goal, really good goal. But I thought he he was a bit quiet at times. Why? Because when we have to defend, I think it nullifies him a little bit more. He's better when we're further up the pitch. And you know. The ball was flying around in that midfield and they were trying to put us under pressure because they had to respond so. So, again, great finish. Really quick thinking. But I didn't think ESR was as was as influential as he, as he normally is. So, I'm going to give ESR a six tonight. So. Kev, I think he's um, our top scorer now, no? Or he scored he more goals than Aubameyang, but he I is, think I he's think. our top scorer, is, right? Yeah, I think he is, yeah. Listen, once again, 
Kev, when you ask the question and Kev says about are, are these young players ready to carry the team, Saka, ESR and Martinelli, tonight is the perfect example. Tonight is the perfect example of what you've talked about on this show, that they are so talented mm -hmm. and they're so ready, but over a period of a season, they're going to need support. They're going to need games where senior players have to step up. And tonight, Kev, our senior players did not. And I'm not calling for Xhaka. Don't take me wrong, you guys. But all I'm saying is, as bad as Xhaka is sometimes, you need that in the dressing room, whether he's on the bench or playing or not. Lacazette, to me, is that guy. Kev, you're so right about... They're so talented and they're ready, but over a period of 38 games in the Premier League, they're going to need support. And tonight is when I felt Emil Smith Rowe needed a little bit more. 100% from, from the senior boys. 100% mm -hmm. so. And like I said, party in the first half was poor. He gave the ball away cheaply. You know, at times we got trapped in midfield. Because United were trying to be on the front foot with us. There's times where we played for them, which was good. But there were times where we tried to play and we got caught. But here's the, here's the issue. Second half, Partey was better. And we, was. Played, we played better. That ball out to Martinelli for Odegaard's goal was quality. Absolute. Picked him out. Martinelli, who I thought was our man of the match, picked out Odegaard on the edge of the box. Balls in the back of the net. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Sophie, we need more than Partey to, to be doing it for a half. He's got to do it for 90 minutes for us, 100%. Yeah. And we're going to get to, obviously, Aubameyang and stuff. Partey, okay. I think, listen, I, I'm going to give Partey 5.5. First half was, was poor, So You're right, he was poor in the first half. But second half, he was, he was, I thought he was a lot better. But it's still not enough. Because yeah. if he's quality in the first half, we probably come out of this game with something. Agree with you. And Colin is reiterating, Arteta said in his post-match tonight, our senior players have to lead. And MK says, echo on Kev. Absolutely. Uh, I've got a five for party tonight, Kev. And five that's only party. because he was poor in the first half. All right, yeah. who's next? El Nenny, Mohamed El Nenny, much maligned. I thought he had a decent game, so if I'm honest <laughs> with you, I did. I thought I'll give him a six tonight. He kept it moving. He's fit. You know what he's going he's gonna to give you. He's not going to create anything. Um, but what he does is he allows party to then drive a little bit further forward and get those passes out to a Martinelli and stuff like that. So I thought he, he had a decent game. He's not the answer. We know that, Sophie. Right. Exactly. He definitely is not the answer and he probably will be gone. This is his last season at Arsenal. But you know what is the answer, Kev? Is a player like him with much more quality that would allow Thomas Partey to do the things more. that he needs to do and would allow him to be that box-to-box -box guy. Mm. He's, he's, to, give, to be fair to Thomas Partey, Kev, he's not been allowed to do that, really. He's always yeah, he had to take on it. all the other responsibilities. Yeah, and, and listen, it's no excuse... We no, understand it's not. that. We, it's no excuse. We understand that in the first half, Thomas Party was poor. Hey, listen, hands up, he was poor. But sometimes your partner, we've seen Lekonga take the game by the scruff of the neck previously and start to play a bit and help Thomas Party out. You know, we've seen Jacka do that. He, we've even seen Jacka do that. So, mate, Lanaus, we've seen him do that. So, again, I think El Nenny. We know what he is. I give him a six, Sophie. I thought he had a decent game. It, you know, it doesn't really put foot wrong. He just keeps the ball moving, doesn't he? Yes, he but, does. But he's, but he's not the answer. We know that. So I give him a six, Sophie. I'll give him a, um, I'll give him a, a, a six as well. Um, and by the way, I think, uh, I don't know, my, my mic unplugged. So if you had a different type of sound and effect, it's because my mic just is pissing I'm on me tonight. Sure. A little bit like Man United pissed on us. Carry mm. on, Kev. Okay. Um, right, we're going to get to Martinelli. 
who I thought he was our best player by, by, by far, Sophie. He was our best player by far. And you know when he picked the ball up in the second half and he started running and he started going and he started going and he picked Aubameyang out. He was running headed for the box and he picked Aubameyang out. You know, Aubameyang's got to do a lot better. Come on. You know, he's got to do a lot better with that. Um, but I thought Martinez was, oh, I thought he was brilliant. I, I'd give Martinez a nine tonight. I thought he was easily our best player. Easily our best player. Do you remember when you said, nine. do you remember a little while ago, Kev, when we talked about how mm, you thought that maybe he wasn't ready because he'd been given chances, but you support him and you always supported him, right? And a lot of Arsenal fans felt like he's not um, ready. He was the man of the match for me tonight. He tried to make everything happen. He tried to put himself in, in positions. He ran channels the way he controlled the ball. There was this one moment where I'll criticize him where in the second half, right at the beginning of the half, he should have played a Bamiyang in a second sooner. Split second. And maybe that comes with it's a bit maybe that's a bit of rhythm. Because let's be honest, it's his first start in the league. Mm -hmm. Sorry, second start. First one was against Brentford. Brentford Can't really yeah. count that. Can't really count that. So this was, you know, his second game start in the league from the first day of the season. So we've got to give him a little bit of leeway. We've got to give him a bit of time. But do you know what, Sophie? He proved today he deserves a spot. I go on merit. And he, he ran, he chased, he looked dangerous. He gave them problems. That's what he done. He gave them problems. And I'll give him a nine, so I'll give him a nine. Easily a man of the match. So a few people are saying, Kev, how can you give a nine to a pl to when we've lost the game, right? Easy. Easy. He was our best player. This is about rating the players, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I give him an eight. I, I love that he took his chance. I love that he was able to make it count. Um, he started, and I'm not being funny. I thought that, you know, whenever he got the ball, I felt like there was an opportunity for us to do something. So I give him an eight. And the pick out, the pick out. Oh my God, he's Erdogan at the edge of the box. At the edge of the box, brilliant. And Kev just, just killed the defense. Killed and the defense. Just, and before United equalised, he had a really good. It was unlike him. He had a really good chance. Udegaard's pass. Yeah, in that first in the half, box. first half, it was on his left foot and didn't quite get the contact. Didn't quite get it. Yeah, yeah. scuffed it a bit, scuffed it a bit, which again can happen. But he's willing to get in there, Sophie. He's willing yeah. to get in there. Yeah. Listen, I, I, I like him. I, I've always said, Sophie. He may not be, you know, we, we question whether he's ready because there's times where he's had the opportunity hasn't take it. But when he gets his chance, he's got to take it, and he's taking it now, Sophie. He's taking it now. I think he's made a mark for himself to be in the team. The same way Saka and Emil Smith-Rowe did, especially Saka under Emery, and it continue, continued on under, under Arteta. Emil Smith-Rowe's emergence as well last season. I think he's made a case for himself to be in the team. I agree. Um, I agree with you. Um, the next one, Soph, is Martin Odegaard. Do you remember we discussed um, yesterday yeah. about knitting the play together? I thought first 20 minutes, I thought we were we were really good. I thought yeah. Erdegaard had some really good moments, etc. And I, I didn't think he... Obviously, it was that tackle from the wrong side that obviously ultim ultimately cost us. But I'm not going to... I'm not going to lambast him for that, so... I'm not going to kill him for that. I thought he knitted play together for us pretty well. Our problem was, Sophie, at the top end of the pitch when it really mattered, we, we were virtually a man light. Kev, is it time for Laka, Martinelli, Emil, Saka? You could be right, Sophie. It could be time to, to look at that and, um, and make, a, make a change because... No disrespect, Sof. Aubameyang is a little bit out of sorts. Even the one that he was offside, which was in the box, and he could have just put it in the net. 
You missed it. It wouldn't. It wouldn't go in. <laughs> you know. And listen, uh, you know me. I'm a strikers' union man. But it might. It might be time to let him come off the bench because the guys who were coming on, like a Martinelli, started today. Looked a lot more lively. Looked a lot more threatening. Done a Bamian tonight. So, you know, listen, Odegaard for me, although he made the mistake for, although he made the mistake for, for the goal, I'm going to give Odegaard a 6.5. I'm going to give him a 6, Kev, um, yeah. only because I thought that he was a workhorse. He tried. He, he kind of, the first 20 minutes, I think it was everything good that was about our game. Um, he got a goal, found himself mm -hmm. in the box. Beautiful finish, by the way. Yeah. What a finish. Clinical. With his wrong foot. Really With good. With his wrong foot as well. And then yeah. he makes, though, a huge, huge mistake. Like, Yeah. Yeah. It's catastrophic in the end, isn't it? Yes. Um, yeah. But, hey, listen. You know, it's, um, it's, it's just so unfortunate for us that we couldn't respond again. You know, we had some opportunities. Like I said... We'll get to obviously Saka and um, and stuff like that. In, but in, I do in think the... that he he does offer something to this Arsenal team from an outlet perspective. Even though I still feel our creativity isn't where it needs to be, Kev, and it yeah. isn't anywhere near where it should be right now. If we're if we're looking at those options, he's the best option. And and you know what else, Sophie? You know we talk about. Martinelli needing help and Smith Rowe needing help. I think he needs help from our experienced players too. Yeah. Martin yeah, Odegaard. I, mean, I think people forget that he's still young, Kev. He's still so young. He needs help. You know, he definitely needs help from Aubameyang for sure. And Thomas Partey midfield. He definitely needs the help. You know, you, you look at our squad and you think, El Nenny, he, he, he's going to do what he does. But are there enough experienced players around it? Is there enough players who can really help these young players? Maybe there isn't at the moment, so maybe there isn't. Kev, do you remember in the summer when we knew that it would never happen? And of course, it was just a, a, a back and forth. But when Jordan Henderson was in his contract thing with Liverpool and you and I were like, what we would do get him for tomorrow? Jordan... We'd, we'd get him tomorrow. And But my, a lot of the Gooners said no. He's too so old. No. Is this? Is this that? The other? That's what are we're you, are you, those are, you are the leaders. Those are the senior type players. Look at Thiago Silva going to Chelsea. Some Arsenal fans were like, "He's a has been. He's, he's come old. from PSG. He's old. He's he's been, old. Yeah. Johnny Evans, same thing, right? Back in the day. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying Johnny Evans is the quality of those players, but sometimes we need to take our snobbery down, uh, crank it down a notch, because these young players need senior players to support them. You've been there, Kev. You've been the young yeah. player and then you've been the captain and the leader. Yeah, it's, it's so vital for young players to have people who they look up to, who can show them the way. Because once you show them the right way, that's how the legacy gets built. Mm -hmm. Because remember, look at the youngsters that are looking to come through, Balogun and all these guys. Who do you reckon they're going to look up to? They're going to look up to the likes of Saka, Smith, Rowe, Martinelli, Erdegaard, Tavares. They're going to look up to all these guys. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who are the next what, the next experienced players. And then you bring the Patinos through. This is who they're going to have to look up to. But they exactly. have to be shown the right. They have to be shown the right way, Sophie. Exactly, Kev. And people can say everything they want about Ronaldo. Tonight, he scores two goals. He just scores. He's a scoring machine. Stop uh, talk, Stop talking about the pressing. There's certain players that you just have. There, he's a luxury player. But he, but you know something, Soph? He, he was up there and he was running he about. Was. He, he was. was trying. He was up there running about. Listen, when you have a player like that, yeah, he can press when, he's, when, he, when he can. But you've got to create chances for him. And he was the difference today because when he had the, he had three chances, possibly, including the penalty, and he scores two goals. So, 
I felt tonight was one of those nights where I looked around and I was like, wow, you know what? In moments like this, like, for example, this Man United team that we should be beating, forget mm -hmm. Liverpool, Chelsea and Man City, but this Man United team we should be beating, Kev. Mm -hmm. I felt, wow, we're really slight on senior players in Big these time. moments. Big time. Big time. Big time, Solf. And, you know, you look at, you look at our team and you look at their team, They've got the experienced players. Although, they're there for the taking, Zolf. So, you know, it's that's the frustrating part. Right, let's, right, get, to, let's get to Oba. Oh, let's boy. get to Oba, Sophie. The, um, it's it's, just it's, not you're the him, striker, is Kev. You're the striker. What do, you, what do you do not, now? What do you do? It is, uh, like I've said before, it may be time that he comes out of the team and he has, he has to come on the pitch from the bench. Because... No matter what he does, what he tries, it's not happening for himself at the moment. It is just not happening. And it seems as though for us, we're kind of carrying him. And I don't want that for Oba. I want Oba to be the difference maker. But even for chances where he's offside and he's right there in the six-yard box, he can't stick it away. It's, it's painful to watch so if I'm honest, it's really painful to watch. As a striker, is it, is it, is it, I would think, because when I, you know, I have a lot of respect for my peers, you know, in terms of what I do, Kev. When you look at that and you see that, especially as an Arsenal fan, even that was just so painful to just see him miss that. It, and you know what? That was not offside. That was. was so tight. Yeah, it, it was, was. like a, a hair's it, it breadth. No, it was, it was offside. So, like I said, because I was doing the game, I, I saw I saw quite a few right. replays. He was offside, but he still, as a striker, remember what happened there, was it two years ago, where he got played in and he went round to keep and put it in, and they said it was offside, and then it went to VAR and it was onside. So you still got to stick it away just in case, so. And he, he couldn't even stick it away. He's in the six-yard box. You've always stood by him, Kev. You've always, because you're a striker. And he's, a striker's he's... union. I, I, I understand the position. I, I know people get frustrated with strikers, etc. But, Sophie, when we're carrying you, when the team's carrying you, and you can't do your job, maybe it's the right time to then take him out the firing line and he comes off the bench. Because, you know, I funny th things funny things happen when you when you sit and watch for a bit and then you come on. But, you know, for me, so, Aubame, uh, listen, Aubameyang tonight gets a, gets a five, right? I give him yeah. a five. There, there are a few people who agree with me that it wasn't offside, it was really tight. But, yeah, I mean, you uh, were doing well, the game. Those, you... who say, those who say it wasn't offside, you watch it again. Because I, I've watched it about 18 times, so he was offside. But yeah, I'd give him a five tonight. i give him a know. three. Yeah. I mean, it's getting worse. And you know what? It's time for him to take a break. And some people in the live chat, because I'm not allowed to say live chat anymore, they corrected me, um, are saying he's got to be benched. And against Everton, Kev. Well, again, it's a must win. It's a must win for Everton, but it's a must win for us. Isn't it? You know, it's, it, these games are must win games. This is huge. Now, Sophie. They're all huge, but this becomes huger. So I don't know, like he, when he's running into channels, you say to yourself, okay, there's no creativity to back that up. But when he's given his chance, you want a world-class striker to bury it. And he's just not there anymore, Kevin. Mm, and I don't yeah. think he's mentally engaged either. Confidence has gone. So, yeah. So um, maybe yeah. it might be time to sit in. All right, um, next. Obviously, from the bench, we saw Saka. We saw Laka. And we saw Eddie. Oh, my gosh. Um, Bring in on... Okay. Kev, can we talk about that for a minute? By the way, this is yeah. the sun. If you think I've got an old man... Christmas Carol beard here. I don't. It's the sun coming through the, uh, oh, the blinds. I thought it was. I thought it was your Captain your Birdseye. You're a mean beard. one, Mister Grinch. Captain Birdseye. <laughs> Captain Birdseye or something. Kev. Um, yeah. Come on. And Ketia was offered a deal. He rejects it, and then he gets rewarded by coming on against Manchester United at Old Trafford. 
doesn't get what rewarded. It's not a reward, Soph. It's we're behind them. We're going for. We're going for. We're going to try and level it up. Oh, and Eddie that, and Ketia is going to score. Yeah. Well, him and what Lacazette about, come on the pitch. Fresh what, legs. Pepe's fresh done, legs. is he not? Is Pepe? Pepe, Pepe's. By the looks of things, Pepe's done, isn't he? That's what it looks like. It's over for Pepe. Mm -hmm. Definitely looks like it. I mean, he bought on Enketia. And, and then people are saying he bought on Enketia for buyers. I'm like, bring on Pepe for buyers. Well, you know, get... for all we know, all we know, Pepe might be a tradable piece in Jan. He's done. It's... You know, he might be a tradable piece in Jan. You know, listen, I, I thought Saka got into a couple of good positions and, and didn't do enough. I know he's coming off the bench, Sophie. But, you know, we spoke about Smith Rowe, Martinelli and Saka about production, goals and assists. That ball drops to you in the 18-yard box from a, a deep cross from um, Tavares. C come on, you've got to show me something. I completely agree with you, Kev. And for me, I think Pepe should have been given a chance to come on and just play down the middle for those last, like, 15 minutes or something. Why not? What do we have to lose? Saka, I think, gets a pass because he's a Halen boy. You and I have talked about this a lot. I don't want to enable him. I never do. He should be held to account like every other Arsenal player. He's a baller. He's been a saviour for this team. But he didn't do very much when he came on. He gets a 5 -4. No, he didn't. Um, Laka didn't do much either. And Eddie didn't do much. So I think I'm just going to give them par. I'm just going to give them Maybe they all, all get fives. fours, actually. I'm just going to give them. I'm just going to give them par fives. Right. That's it. They get fives, just like Oba. They get fives. That's it. All right. Let's get out on the manager, Kev. Yeah, the manager. I, listen, again, I fought the manager. I'm going to give the Mikel Arteta six tonight. We come away from home at Old Trafford. We score two goals and we end up being under the losing team. You know, obviously, it came down to that incident the penalty pe or penalties one we didn't get one they got and again you score two goals away from home you're doing something right but we couldn't get over the line Sophie and ultimately that's our that's our problem we've got to be able to get over the line in these big games and we can't yeah it's time it's time um especially against you know Never mistake, because I always say this about Arsenal, you guys. Never mis mistake being a poor Premier League team right now for being a big club. Manchester United are also a poor Premier League team right now, but they're still a massive club, as we as we know. They're the most winning team in in the in the Premier League history, uh, but we failed to capitalize on a moment where we could have beat them, mm -hmm. and that's the harshest thing about tonight. My gut hurts. Mm. I'm over it. After the show tonight, you know what? I'm just going to get a hot water bottle and get a bowl of soup and go watch something to take my mind off things. This loss tonight has affected me more than any other game all season. It was there for the taking. They're not that great. We made them look great. We gave them the bravado. They have a belief now. It's going to be the nucleus for their season. And watch, mark my words, Ralph Ranick and Antonio Conte will uplift their teams. They have experience. We still have a naivety, not only on the pitch, but with a young manager who's learning his way. And there's moments in games and there's moments in time where that comes to fruition. And tonight was one of those. We could have taken them in the first half and instead we went conservative, Kev. And I think that's the one thing that I'm most gutted about. Mikel Arteta gets a five for me tonight. They're not oh. good, Kev. They're not a good team. No, they're not a good team, but they've got good weapons. good players. Yeah, well, that, you know what? That's what you say to me <laughs> all the time. It's the players, so It's the players. You know, they're not a good team, Sophie. They are not a good team. But you know what they've got? They've got quality where it matters. They've got quality. And if you let them utilize that quality, they're going to hurt you. But Kev, this is this is the game, right? That would have shut a lot of like I was talking to Paul Ross last night on Talk Sport, 
and I felt pretty confident about the game because of we our should. because we of should our, feel confident. Our record against them too over the last six games in the Premier League, Kevin. And I just don't yeah. understand how. This is why I still. This is the problem with having a young team. But against it is. that. Against it that is. United team, it stings, it hurts. And, and Sophie, of course it's going to sting and of course it's going to hurt. This is the problem with young teams. But with the young teams, that's where your experienced players have to step up. But they got their players stepping up the experience. We didn't quite get... Second half, party stepped up. First half... Party was awful. At least he stepped up second half. Abamyang didn't quite step up tonight and he hasn't stepped up for a few weeks now. So again, you know, there must be there's gonna be a decision. Big game. You know, Everton's gonna be a huge game. And they have won they're, in they're what, smart. seven games, Kev. Exactly. Eight. They're smart and you can imagine listen, let me tell you something. That could get toxic. Yes, if we lose that to them. Atmosphere. No, not, 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 mm -hmm. I'm, I'm talking about Everton. Go, go, a goal down. That could get toxic. They're fighting for their life, Sophie. We've got to match them, Soph. Because they are going to be fighting for their lives. That's for sure. Do you feel like Arteta changed things up a little bit tonight when in the... Do you, do you feel like he managed the game tonight? Are you happy with that part of it, Kev? Yeah, I've got no, I've got no problem with that part because, like I said, it, it all boiled down to two penalty incidents at the end of the day. At the end of the day, we didn't get even our, our penalty shout looked at. They got their one, which, uh, which was a penalty. Tackling from the wrong side. You're gonna, it's gonna be given as a penalty. So, I'll tell you something, Kevin. We will never, we we can, we cannot lose to Everton. We have to get a result. We have to. So it, forget we about have it. To, we have to. They have to win. Arsenal have to win. It's the pressure's that on us. Yeah, but the pressure's on the no, Sophie. The pressure's on both teams. Trust me. You get beat at home by your in the derby game four one. And then you got Arsenal coming to town next. They're going to be rolling their sleeves up. Trust me. I I think, though, people are expecting Everton to implode even further. Whereas tonight, for me, the biggest slight, the biggest, the biggest issue I have tonight, Kev, is that we failed to make a mark and a move that in the back pages tomorrow, the narrative would have been, United still have lots of work to do, whereas now it's going to be, where do United go from here? So during the game on NBC, before the pregame, sorry, it was all about them, right? Not mm. being where they need to be. And then I said to Tony, I said, watch this. After If we don't get a result, it's all, it's all going to be about us and how we failed again to beat a Tom team, top team. But everyone will forget that they hadn't beaten us in six. Everyone will forget about all those stats. That's the thing that pisses me off the most, Kevin. Yeah. And, and, but but you know what, Sophie? It's what have you done for me lately, not what have you done for the, for the previous six games. It's about this game. That's what it's about. It's a long season you know, And Ronaldo's wrote, wrote his own script again. He certainly has. Okay, that's it. That's all we've got time for this evening. Thanks to everyone 600 plus of you in live chat tonight don't let kev ask you twice because he's wearing his dicky bow tonight too so if there's 600 of you in live chat right now kev what are you expecting i'm expecting at least 400 plus come on guys it's tonight time hit the like button listen i've been at i've been at this all day <laughs> so come on give me a little lift and give Sophie some some uh, some love. Hit that like button, please. Caress Remember it. Remember back in school, Kev, in. one of those 
One of those old school, like when you used to do that hug in the back and stuff like that, where it looked like someone was hugging you. Uh, yeah. Anyway, Super Kev, take us out. Um, you're not around tomorrow for Kev says. No, I'm on. I'm doing Radio Five Live tomorrow. So yes. Um, I'm not sure what your show is, but I'm sure we'll speak after. And, Absolutely. Um, Squaddies, Sophie, thanks for for tonight for for allowing me to get home and and do this with you. Obviously, Squaddies, thanks for joining up. Um, whether you agree with me, whether you don't agree with me, whether you agree with Sophie, whether you don't, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. On the way out, hit the like button. And you know what, squaddies? I love you. We love Arsenal. We missed on a great opportunity tonight. But at ease, good night, good day, and take care. You can go cry now. <laughs> Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad.